in the forest areas of central Thailand. The music of the camp. Two hundred years ago, the ancestors of these people fled from Burma and were granted sanctuary by the king of Thailand. Today, they call themselves Thai Karen. They are no longer refugees. The village life is rich and productive, but this rural harmony is now open to challenge. Karen life is deeply rooted in the forest and its natural resources. This old banyan tree is a spiritual center, a setting for ceremonies that demonstrate the religious link between the people and the natural resources of the forest. For centuries, life here was simple but good. Mm. He said that it's no rich, no poor. Yeah, at that time, because of anyone can access the the forest. Yeah, if you need yeah some how uh, to build a house or something like that, you can use the forest. Yeah. And uh, cannot see any different, yeah, among themselves. Mm -hmm. Then, in 1974, the government opened a logging concession in this area. For the next 13 years, the villagers saw thousands of trees cut down. They saw waterways dry up, and the forest environment change under the pressure of logging activity. The community lost most of its land. Elephants live here once, but no longer. Loggers shot the last one in 1986. The next year, the logging concession was terminated. But for the people of Hue Hindam, the troubles were not over. The government declared much of the new land as conservation areas, a threat to ban all agriculture in what had now become a national park. Khun Soming Sun Thon Wong is manager of Thai Collaborative Country Support Program, set up by RICOF to help forest communities such as this at Hue Hindam. Rikov's vision is to improve the lives of people such as this through greater access to and control over forest resources. The contribution of this village women was to set up a handicrafts cottage industry and again we see the forest influence. They make and mix their own natural dyes for the distinctive patterns on their woven materials. The source of these dyes are local trees, a typical bond between community and forest. The Hue Hindam community consists of 85 households and a population of 440. In the mid-1990s, it moved to establish a system of management for the forest areas in which it worked. Yeah, and it's guaranteed that they did not destroy the forest. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, already proved that they take care well, yeah, and they can, you know, expand their forest. Yeah. Yeah. And the forest is more better than be before. Mm -hmm. That is one way to tell uh, the government, tell the public that going on with them. Yeah. It's like uh, make sure that uh, they are not the person who, you know, who cut tree or who destroy the forest. Mm -hmm. But still, people face challenges. Most serious is government policy to declare this a conservation area, which could force their removal from this land. However, they are determined to be free from the national park 
and to negotiate with the government on forest management. It should be recognized yeah, by official or by profit that they have their own right yeah, to work in their own land. Yeah, that is enough. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why recognition yeah, and uh, like uh, uh, what else? It's not the, the legal, yeah, but anyhow, if any, anyone can accept them that they have their own right to work in their field. But these villagers continue under the guidance of Brickhoff and its Thai community program to manage their natural resources, the links between livelihood and forest. Nature, they say, has given them the right to work this land. And as they wait in hope for official recognition of this right, they have a handful of time trees as reminders of their original forest lands. And they have the music and their greatest hope that children 